Hello and welcome to yet another edition of Time Pass for the New Indian Express. I have with me, by very, very popular demand, Luke Coutinho. He's um, possibly the best known uh, holistic lifestyle coach that India has. Uh, people go to him for all sorts of advice. I'm sure he's quite exhausted with the list of uh, requests that he gets, but he's very good humored about it. And um, he's also led a thoroughly interesting life, which I think has got him to where he is currently. Uh, he's a graduate of uh, uh, IHM. He's uh, been a DJ. He's uh, worked with IBM. He's written books. He's uh, advised uh, uh, some of the best known names there are. Uh, so welcome, Luke, and thank you so much. Uh, we know how much an hour of your time uh, costs, so we're really grateful to have you here. Um, thank you. I'd like I'd like to start, of course, with the uh, uh, lockdown and the kind of uh, impact that you've seen uh, among uh, your clients and among people around you, and what really is the solution? I've seen two kinds of impacts, basically, that the lockdown has had. Okay, right. one is people with the right mindset are really utilizing this time to look after their health, right. to learn new skills, to read books, plan different businesses, because, you know, most businesses right now can't function the right way. So there's a whole lot of people who are doing that, spending a lot more time with family, reintrospecting into their lives. Right. And then there's a whole lot of people who are just looking at it so negatively, like they're just waiting for lockdown to end. And they, they're dependent on it ending for their lives to improve in some way. So okay. you see the same kind of people, same problem, but two completely different mindsets. Yeah. So there are two different behaviors that we're seeing over here. Now, the future, none of us know. None of us know what we have in the future. Even if there's no lockdown, we're not in control of the future. We think we are, yeah. but we're not in control. So the best thing that people can do at this point is be patient. Okay, yeah. if we focus on the negative, our life is going to spiral into negativity. We right. know there is a problem, but it should motivate us to actually start looking at what we already have in our life and what we can do going forward. Because everyone's been dealt the same hand. Yeah. Everyone. No, no matter who you are, where you are, what our designations are, where we live, we all have been dealt the same hand. So I think the attitude and mindset plays a major role in how people are going to come out of this lockdown. And uh, Luke, I cannot help but ask about uh, Shushan Singh Rajput, though it's not directly related to uh, what we're discussing, but in a way it is, because here you have someone who's clearly at the peak of his physical fitness, uh, mentally quite strong as well, not that uh, he was not knowledgeable, but at some point some fragility enters your life, and whether it's a snap decision or a well thought out decision, uh, something like this happens and uh, it really shakes the world, doesn't it? Apart from it being a terrible tragedy of a young life wasted. Absolutely. It is a terrible tragedy. My heart goes out to his family, his fans, everyone. You know, it is sad. The human mind is a very delicate, it's a very, very delicate thing. You know, it can destroy us, it can yeah. create us, it can build, it can go any way. But I think the call out message is, you know, there are hundreds and thousands of not just young adults, but even children who are stuck into depression and it takes away their lives. The amount of suicides are huge. Right. You know, it's, we got media to show us, you know, a few cases where it's really, you know, uh, a real, but the story is beyond that. There yeah. are young students in the ninth standard and 10th standard who commit suicide because they don't know the marks that they're going to get. Exactly. It's a real problem. And, you know, there's no one really to blame over here. What we have to look at is the world that we've created for ourselves. You know, human beings have challenged the laws of nature. You know, the same mind, the same brain, the same body thinks it can consume more and more and more and more. And what we're living in right now, most of us, is just a trap of a virtual world, right. you know, which promises, promises us everything, but yet people are so empty. Yeah. So I always give people the example of look around at our times, compare it with our parents and our grandparents. We have yeah. so much more. Yeah. Technology, comforts, money, wealth, food, restaurants, entertainment, everything. But we're way unhappier, way more depressed, way more sadder than that. It only shows us one thing, that simplicity is the way forward. We can have abundance, we can have wealth, we can have fame. Right. But our fundamental is simplicity. And if we lose that, the world controls us. We become puppets to society and everything else. 
Yeah. And Luke, you must have seen this world quite closely because uh, in a way, although you're not part of it, uh, uh, you know, a lot of them come to you for advice and they seek your uh, help. Uh, so is it really as tough as uh, people are making it out to be? Or is it like any other industry, the entertainment industry, you know, where you have to be mentally tough, physically tough, uh, physically able as well? See, it doesn't matter. You know, I mean, it is a tough industry. There's no doubt. Just imagine, put ourselves in the shoes of someone who has millions and millions of fans. And those same yeah. fans love you one day and they don't like you when your movie or your yeah. song goes for a flop. But we've become attached, you know, our self-worth is attached to the opinions in the of the world. Yeah. So we'll have ups and downs according to how people like us. So it is a difficult industry and you can be strong mentally and physically. But, you know, it is so difficult when you have people out there trolling you and hating you one day and loving you the next day. And you don't know how to be anymore. Your every action is, am I going to be liked or right. am I going to be disliked? It's a yeah. tough world. In right. the film industry, everywhere, even in normal life, take a corporate career, for example. Yeah. Most people today, if they don't have love in their own selves and their families and real relationships, you start seeking validation from the world. Yes. And that's the worst place to seek it from because one day you have it, you'll be happy. The next day you don't have it. That means you'll be sad. That's where you're, that you're on an emotional roller coaster because right. our self-worth is attached to everything but ourselves. Exactly. And it's a tough industry. There's no yeah. doubt about that. But Luke, uh, I mean, you advise moderation uh, in everything. Um, you know, uh, you talk about quality sleep, you talk about balanced nutrition, adequate exercise, emotional detox. These are the four pillars of your uh, uh, thought, uh, if, I, if I'm right, if I'm correct. That's right. Uh, which is really all about moderation, which really is all about our ancient and traditional way of life. The whole concept of yoga was really the balance of mind, body, soul, which in a way Correct. is the same thing. Yet we seem to have lost it somewhere. Uh, how do you advise people who come to you and say, you know, help us, Luke, <laughs> we're, you know, we're desperate. So it's very simple. Even before anyone signs up with us, we made it clear to them that the fundamentals of what we do and what will lead them to success is we need their participation yeah. in understanding and abiding by the fundamentals that we will look at nutrition that suits you. We will look right. at activity that suits you. Your sleep has to change or nothing's going to work for you. And we have to come to terms somewhere with your emotional health. Yeah. If we're able to set the fundamentals right, we don't have a magic drug that heals people. Yeah. All of our cancer patients in remission, we don't have a drug. We don't have a magic food. They've right. changed their lifestyles. They've harnessed the own intelligence of their immune system. And that is what has healed them. I don't heal anyone. My team doesn't heal anyone. We enable them to, you know, harness the own energy of their bodies, which is their immune system. So those are the fundamentals. And if people can align themselves to that recovery, prevention, everything becomes way easier. And of course, there's destiny, which is not within our control. But yeah. over and above destiny, everything else is within our control. Our bodies are built to fight the most severe viruses and diseases. But we've not enabled it or we've abused it that it cannot enable itself. So uh, when people come to you during this virus in particular, because suddenly now people have realized immunity is the best drug, uh, prevention is the best cure, which is something that we knew all along, but forgot it right. somewhere along the way. So when people come to you and say, Doc, uh, I'm sure they call you Doc, whether you, whether <laughs> you uh, are or not, but they come to yeah. you and say, you know, help me build my immunity. So what would you advise uh, a person uh, uh, you know, I, I'll give you a couple of examples. Someone who comes to you sure. saying, I want to build my immunity. Uh, I have three months. Okay. Another comes to you and says, I want to lose, say, 20 kilos. I have uh, three months or six months. Uh, and someone who says, you know, I, I can't sleep, which is a lot of people. You know, the, right. uh, insomnia, I think, is a really general condition. So suppose you have three different cases. What would you advise them? I know uh, this is uh, p possibly, uh, you know, what you do uh, uh, for a fee, but... Uh, no, no, I, that's I, fine. That's absolutely yeah. fine. I talk about this free on social media. Absolutely. I'm not, a, I, I don't, I don't, sh I don't hide any information at all. It's I me sharing information that has yeah. built my whole business. Yeah. Because you know what we, what people pay us for? Motivation. Everyone yeah. knows what they should do. They just don't do it. They just don't do it. All the information is on the internet. We've put yeah. everything out there. Right. But most people don't do it. And some people genuinely need help because of the complication of the problem. Exactly. So very simple, someone who has a problem sleeping, 
yeah. first they should be willing to change their lifestyle most people can't sleep because they've abused the circadian rhythm they sleep at different timings every day the right. body has a clock if you don't follow the clock it's not going to support you yeah. then if they're willing to eat their dinners a little bit earlier if they're willing to have some amount of physical activity so the body goes through some amount of fatigue right. so then it gets tired and it falls asleep then some changes in their diets so a lot of people who eat sugar just before bedtime sugar breaks down into energy how will you mm-hmm. sleep yeah. so it's really minor lifestyle changes some people are on heavy medications and they go to severe stress and because their mind can't stop thinking they right. can't sleep so then we put them through meditation we put them through sometimes if it's very deeply rooted and they need counseling we put them on to professional counselors because if you don't attack the root cause of the problem you're never going to get better you know yeah. there's always a pill to take care of as a shortcut of what right. the root cause is which right. has its own side effects that's number one someone wants to lose weight in 3 months we tell them you can start losing weight in a week <laughs> but are you willing to do what it takes yeah. baby steps okay yeah. first your nutrition not what the world is doing what will suit you yeah. are you overeating are you chewing your food the right way are you eating right. at different timings every day okay what kind of food are you eating are you imitating some fad diet out there which doesn't even suit you that's crippling your metabolism so we break down nutrition then we put them through activity it could be as simple as yoga and walking most of our patients lose weight with just the combination of yoga and walking of course right. you want the gym they do they're not bad things but we want you to do the basics create blood circulation sleep i tell them up front if you're not willing to improve your sleep you will not lose your weight it's not about food it's not about exercise it's about your sleep number one so once they're in agreement to lose sleep we put them through the normal protocol of sleep hygiene and then there's emotional wellness because the science is clear if your stress levels are chronically high you have high cortisol when you have high cortisol your body stores fat simple mm. so we explain our programs are very educative we don't just give someone a diet plan they don't work we teach them we teach them to understand themselves so when we show them that hey you got a week right of sleeping well you know doing your meditation and guess what you lost weight you lost fat and then they're motivated they say wow i did this and it worked for me and then they do it and we hand hold them and hand hold them until it becomes a lifestyle right. so it's really simple then you spoke about immunity so immunity yeah. is very simple instead of adding foods that boost immunity we first take care of the things that they're doing that dampens immunity so right. number one sleep deprivation you yeah. can be the healthiest person eating organic food exercising every day but if you're not sleeping sufficient your immune system's going to crash right. number 2 is stress the more stressed you are the lower your immunity that's why doctors tell you don't be stressed or you will fall sick yeah. it's because your immune system falls number 3 food is very simple you know i mean we don't have to do any superfoods anything complex as long as you're having your fruits your vegetables your nuts your seeds your dals your whole grains more important than that is sugar the more sugar you have your immune system starts falling So you right. see it's really simple things immunity is not complicated it's complicated when people come with cancers and different program you know diseases then you got to really balance it and get really right down to vitamins and minerals and deficiencies but for most people by just correcting their lifestyle they start to boost their immune system so it's really that simple i read somewhere that you are a great believer in khichdi which is i think terrific uh, talk a little about really the basic things that we used to eat as children and we forgot that along the way somewhere and uh, got addicted to a certain different kind of food but if we really go back to what our mothers cook for us we'll be fine absolutely absolutely and it's the you know it's the so it's the media that has made us believe because today if i need to sell you a protein yeah. how am i going to sell you a protein yeah. i'm going to show you a really nice physique or a nice size 0 figure yeah. you know in a gym with a jar of protein so your yeah. mind will connect great body workout and protein yeah. so now your neuro pathways build up an image in your mind showing you that protein is required for this great body yeah you know a couple of years ago if you know people ask me do i have regrets in life i don't have any regrets in life no matter the ups downs negatives but i have one regret not taking a picture of this particular farmer okay so i was in goa okay my parents live here it was about at 6 years ago <clears throat> and i was walking in the fields behind our house and i saw this farmer and he was he was just wearing like you know he was just wearing pants he was he was bare chested and what attracted to me from far away was his body he had this six pack he was ripped he was ripped <laughs> no photoshop no airbrush i'm looking at a live thing i walked over to him i didn't have my phone to click a picture of him because he would have been he would have been the cover of my book to show right. people simplicity right. and i started talking to him in broken hindi and stuff asking him what he eats his job is in his field he yeah. digs trenches he digs that's his only exercise right he eats kichdi <laughs> for breakfast lunch and dinner that's it 
yeah. no protein shakes, no superfoods, nothing. And I was like, you know, look at this. So he has a lot of activity, intensive right. activity, but he's eating kichiri, which itself is a complete protein. And from that day, I realized how social media and magazines confuse us in thinking that we need complication for a great body. And I always use this example of farmers, even the women. Look at the women who carry, yeah. you know, water from the well. Um, Not an ounce of fat in their bodies. Postures are great, slender absolutely bodies. Straight. Yeah. So that's the truth right there. And that's what I'm trying to share with the world that, you know, these foods don't make us fat. Now, if you start eating kitchidi and you're sedentary, obviously yeah. you're going to put on weight, you know. <laughs> So it, it's all of it. Everything is balanced. We can't demonize, you know, people will say, oh, kitchen is high carb. Yeah, it is a carb. But if you're working out what you're supposed to do, you're going to utilize that energy that the carb breaks down into. But it's still a wholesome, great food. Right. Um, Luke, you're a great supporter of the farmers and which is very key right now because, you know, we, when we talk about um, uh, our farmers in distress, uh, part of the problem is that we have tended to ignore uh, their produce. So, you know, we've tended to uh, uh, sort of uh, disregard their contribution. But you're a great believer in uh, the Indian farmer and not just his way of life, but his produce. Talk a little about how the wellness market can harness uh, the Indian farmer's strengths and really take this whole idea of Atman Nirbharta and Made in India that we hear about take it right. to the next level. Okay, great. So for me in integrative medicine, we use food as medicine. So yeah. for me, the most important people are the farmers, not the pharmaceuticals. Exactly. They're great. Yeah. But for me, I need food. I need proper food if I'm going to heal people. I can't use sprayed vegetables and sprayed fruits. Right. And the farmers, they are the people who provide us what we eat every single day. It's entirely not our fault, like you said. It is the fault of the middleman. The right. middleman has come and ruined the farmers. They take their produce. It reaches us. But when someone starts spraying and, you know, finding cheap ways to give us synthetic and hybrid foods, which are cheaper, the middlemen ignore the farmers. So we don't get their produce. Right. I think most of us would love to consume food straight from the farmers if oh, we yeah. had the channels to reach us. Right. And that's what we're doing. You know, we are working to set up a sustainable food chain. We want the middleman out. There has to always be a middleman to facilitate logistics, but we want middlemen who are here with a vision to support the farmers and also make their livelihood. But the farmers have to grow. They have to get wealthier and wealthier so that they're motivated to grow more and more. When I was in Punjab, I spoke to a lot of farmers and they said, look, we, are, we don't have money to feed our own families because no one's taking our food because there's someone who's growing crops which are hybrid and synthetic and selling it cheaper than us. So the middleman yeah. wants to make his buck. So I think it's a joint effort of everyone and we're trying to create a platform where we are connecting farmers. In fact, the farmers are involved in this. Right now, I, I'm backed by a couple of hundreds of farmers who are telling us, Luke, this is the platform we need. If we have this platform where we can upload our own produce and people can buy it directly from us. And we're currently working on that platform. We have a lot of people who are aligned to this. So if a farmer tomorrow in Punjab can wake up he has an app and back end, he can upload his own produce and someone can directly buy it. That's how the farmers are going to grow. So we've involved the farmers in this process. We've asked them, tell us what you want and we will build that into a multilingual, whatever it is. But the middleman should now become the app. So right. the money comes directly. It goes from the farmer to the consumer, consumer to the farmer. And it is possible. It is possible. The world is changing. People don't mind spending a little more money to get real food. Because the, the, the high synthetic food is making us sick. So you either spend that money on poor food and hospital bills or you start eating the right way and hopefully reduce your hospital expenses. I think soon you'll be called Sardar Luke Kotino Singh. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I, I, I just want to be Luke, that's all. <laughs> you'll be an honorary Sikh in Punjab. Uh, I think they'd be very grateful for help uh, such as this. Also cropping patterns, uh, what they grow, all that has really undergone a huge change because of the market. Do you Absolutely. have to change some of that? Uh, do you have to work with them to do that? Yeah, we have for that, we have to change our consumerism, how right. we consume. Like, you know, today people want crops that don't grow in the season to be provided throughout. Yeah. People have to just learn to eat as per the season exactly. and locally. Yeah. There's so much of variety, but most people are spoiled for variety. They want yeah. it. So yeah. there's always someone to give the consumers what they yeah. want and make money out of it. There's nothing wrong in that. So consumerism has to change. And believe me, most of our health problems can be reduced if we start eating what grows as per the season. 
It is beautiful. Those are the right foods to maintain our body temperature, our you know, immune system. It's just beautiful if we follow the cycle of nature. But that's where consumers are spoiled because we believe we're entitled to variety. We're entitled to everything throughout the year. So there's a market that comes us and supports us and puts the farmers completely on the back burner. So I think as we educate people to change consumerism and habits, this is going to change as well. So, uh, you know, what, what is it that you would tell people to eat in summers, in monsoon and in winters? Basic food groups like vegetables and fruit. So it's simple. Like right now, let me talk about Maharashtra, Goa, this area, right? Yeah. Cucumbers are growing, cauliflower, right. cabbage, yeah. a few legumes, spinach is coming out, yeah. beetroots, carrots, cucumbers, lemons, onions, potatoes, the normal stuff. The yeah. mango season has ended. Right. The mangoes grew in summer because it's a cooling fruit. It's rich in vitamin C to prepare our immunity for the, uh, for the, for, for the monsoons. Now in winter, we'll have a different set of crops that come right. up. You know, our more pulses will come in. Jaggery will start happening because that's a warming food. Yeah. So you see, we're now working with, with farmers to publish what grows locally. So that becomes our go-to list. So in fact, that's a good idea. I'll share it today. Our farmers just got back to us with a list with what is growing locally right now. And believe me, there is so much to choose from. Right. So much to choose from. And if we just eat that, we're supporting our farmers and we're getting healthier. Right. So we're going to be publishing these lists every season that this is what grows locally. Absolutely. So suddenly someone comes and says, hey, I have strawberries to sell. You yeah. know that, hey, this doesn't grow. It's hybrid. I yeah. shouldn't be eating this right now. So we're going to be educating people like that, you know, on what grows locally and what grows seasonally. So what are the fruits that one should be eating right now? What so right now, is? yeah, watermelon is happening. Uh, watermelon is happening. Pomegranates are happening. Pomegranates right. will happen. All the citrus fruits. Look at the beauty of that. Citrus fruits are rich in vitamin C. During right. the monsoons, we need more immunity. Yeah. Now we'll see oranges start to happen. And all of these fruits will come in right now locally. Pineapples as well. So local fruits is the way to go. Right. So whenever you go to your vegetable or a uh, fruit seller, just make sure that you say what is gro grown here. Where did you get it from? So if, Absolutely. It's, if it's from uh, uh, too far off a place, uh, you know, the carbon footprint, as we call it, uh, then make sure that you don't buy it. Yeah. I, you know, I mean, uh, we shouldn't Loosely. support it completely. But like, yeah. for example, I know kiwis don't grow in our country. Right. Kiwis don't grow in our country. But avocados, very, for instance. No, avocados now grow. They, they actually do. grow. Okay. They grow in China in the south. So yes, that's a great crop. But then okay. we should buy avocados that grow in India. We're right. waiting for avocados to come from Mexico and different <laughs> places and stuff like right. that. They're treated, for sure. Yeah. You know, I was giving you an example of kiwis. Now, kiwis yeah. are not local to us, but I wouldn't shun it. For certain patients, you know, where they have a DNA problem, like cancers, patients going right. through radiation, kiwis are known to have a DNA repairing ability. So I would use it for them. Right. So, you know, it's nice to have a mixed market, but primarily I wouldn't want 90% of my diet to be local. And if I need to use something specifically, it can play a role, but we right. should still try to live locally. Uh, Luke, let's talk a little about vegetarianism, a big issue, you know, especially during this pandemic, there was suddenly the scare, you know, let's just cut out all the, uh, you know, uh, uh, meats from our diet because, you know, this is what it gets you. Uh, a pandemic. So let's talk a little about that. What do you, what is your take on uh, going vegetarian? See, I mean, I always look at data today. I mean, when I look at the data of all my cancer patients, because, you know, we categorize that as a deadly disease to everyone who's diabetic. I okay. still have data. I still need data to show me whether vegetarians are healthier than non-vegetarians. Vegans nice. are healthier. We have no such data. I have sick vegans, I have sick vegetarians, and I have sick non-vegetarians. Oh, you know, it is not about that. Of course, sometimes like a, a bypass patient or a patient with a blockage, I would want them to get onto a plant-based diet to reduce inflammation. Right. You know, I would want certain cancer patients to consume organ meat because it helps them with their immune system. It's very different. You know, it's from person to person. So there are too many extremes in our world right now. People yeah. fighting that vegetarian. Show us the data. I have some of the unhealthiest people being vegans. Yeah. They are so deficient. In, that doesn't mean veganism is wrong. Right. They are so deficient. They've done it the wrong way. They've right. not supplemented their diets the right way. And you would expect vegans to be like young and radiant and glowing. But most of them are old and haggard and, you know, all of that stuff. So my point is not to bring that down. I could say the same thing for non-vegetarians right. as well. It right. comes down to your lifestyle, how you right. absorb food, what is right for you. If you grew up eating animal protein, it's part of your genes now. 
You know, yeah. you can still become vegetarian, but you need to transition very, very slowly. So I always say with intention, if you're becoming a vegan because all your friends are becoming a vegan, you don't have any logic or science to why you're doing it, don't do it. Live with intention. If you want to become a vegan because animal slaughter or you feel it's going to be healthy or it makes you feel light, do it. You want to be vegetarian because of, you know, don't be a puppet. Don't be yeah. controlled because everyone's doing it. I should start doing it. It doesn't work. I have so many vegans who on the slide, they will eat, drink milk and thing because then they say, oh, look, you know, but I'm losing muscle mass. Then don't do it. Who asked you to do it? <laughs> you know, keep it simple. Keep it simple. You know, like I said, there is still data to show us or make a claim which one is healthier. It all comes down to your lifestyle and your attitude and your mindset. I have meat eaters who have eaten meat all their life and they have better medical reports than some of the Jains out there who don't touch anything. Okay. You know, not, not, not to, you know, say that uh, it's derogatory yeah, in any way. I'm just trying to show you, you know, the whole, uh, people are living in extremes and they need to stop doing that. People should have a mind of their own. Eat it. Your body will tell you, do you feel good? If I eat vegetarian food and it makes me feel great, I'm going to eat more of it. Yeah. You know, so listen to your body. Follow that right. part. But sometimes listening to your body can be a little dangerous because your body can just crave comfort food. And That's if you're listening to your emotions. There's a big difference. There's emotional okay. hunger and physical hunger. Right. So you have to be very careful which one you're listening to. If so it's emotional you, hunger, yeah. it's a problem. How do you distinguish? It's very simple. Like if I suddenly start craving like cupcakes and chocolates today, I may eat it. I may give in to it because it's a one-off craving. But right. I also want to reflect on what have I gone through today? You right. know, did I have any, you know, anger? Did I feel low or did I go through some bad meetings or some, did some of my patients die and I'm feeling emotional and I want to lift. So I'm craving sugar. I yeah. want to be aware or I might just be big deal. It's raining outside. It's the perfect weather for a hot chocolate and a cupcake. I'm just going to do it. Yeah. You know? So that's when you listen to your body. But when I'm mindlessly living coffee yeah. after coffee, cupcake after cupcake, I'm not in control of my life. You know, that's when it becomes a problem. That's when your emotional hunger and your emotional voids are controlling you and dictating your behavior. We got to be Luke careful. Has, with that. Yeah, Luke, there's also so much talk about sleep, you know, uh, and we've almost become competitive about sleep. Uh, you know, oh, I sleep two hours, I sleep three hours, you know, and I get so much more out of my day. Uh, uh, you know, it's become almost unhealthy, this obsession with sleeping less mm -hmm. and doing more. <laughs> how do you get out of that and how do you convince people? Uh, we all know that we need to sleep at least seven to eight hours but how do you convince people to do that we all so, know we yeah. need to shut screens at least an hour before all that you know but what do you do what do you tell people see unhealthy obsessions come from an unhealthy mindset and attitude right. you know there are a lot of people who think because there are a lot of fake stories on social media where entrepreneurs have tried to show that their success is because they work so hard exactly. and they didn't sleep all of that is yeah. bull crap <laughs> i know i know billionaires who have five hour, five hour working days and they're billionaires. Yeah. You know, so a lot of people, they make their success stories built on lies, you know, and that's a very wrong message to youth and people around us. So a lot of you think that, oh, I should have 18 hour days in order to be successful. No, you got to be smart to be successful. You don't have to ruin your health. So my point when it comes to sleep, Okay, people need to understand and it's not seven to eight hours. It is a quality of sleep. So right. some people can sleep for five hours, deep quality, wake up fresh. Hmm. That sleep was good enough for them. Some people right. sleep for nine hours and still wake up tired. Because right. They didn't have a good quality of sleep. So the point is the quality of sleep. And you know, like I said, if we follow the, the cycles of nature, which means we have clocks in us. If right. we listen to these clocks, which means go to sleep at the same time every day, at Indeed. least five out of seven days, keep your weekend, do what you want. There's a clock. Your body has to work with a clock. The simple right. example I give people is tomorrow if you wake up and I take away your watch, your phone, your clocks, everything, you can't see time. Your entire day is going to be chaotic. Now, mm -hmm. just imagine that same thing happening in the body. If your clocks are not working, every function in your body is in chaos, yeah. right from digestion to breathing to every single thing. So people have to understand that now the definition of success is wrong. Success means accumulation of wealth, fame, whatever it is, but without losing your health. Yeah. Anyone can sacrifice their health to build wealth. Anyone can do that. I could be the person getting promoted because my boss sees me in office 18 hours. I do all yeah. the work. I yeah. suck up to him, all <laughs> of that stuff. 
But at the end of the day, I have high blood pressure, diabetes, and half the money I'm earning is spent on my medical bills. Right. The definition of success is whatever you achieve without the compromise of your health. And at the end of the day, you should be able to say, I feel good. Mm. I feel happy. I feel happy. There are so many people with massive bank balances. They say, I, I'm empty. I don't know how to be happy. I have everything in the world. Yeah. And this is emptiness. This is not fulfillment. So when it comes to sleep, everyone needs to understand it is a fundamental of human health. You yeah. cannot compromise it, period, no matter who did what. And there is, uh, I always convince people with one piece of research by Dr. Matt Walker, who heads human sciences at the Berkeley University. He yeah. wrote a book called Why We Sleep. And he did his experiments, not on rats and mice, but on human beings. Right. And there's one statement there which says, sleep deprivation for even one to two to three nights can demolish your immune system by 60 to 70%. But that alone has to motivate people that, listen, your immune system is demolished if you're sleep deprived, so you better get your sleep in place. No amount of garlic, broccoli, superfoods <laughs> is going to help you if you don't get your sleep in place. So I think people need to grow up and understand that you know, success is not dependent on doing more. Most of my billionaire clients, the successful people who have their health in place, they have very well organized days. They plan their days. Today, we have 24 hours. And always remember, you, me, a billionaire, a millionaire, someone, you know, who's earning a couple of lakhs, all of us have 24 hours given to us. How is it that all of us utilize it differently? Right. But we all have 24 hours to make it successful. It's planning and organizing. Half the people out there who compromise sleep waste their time in a day. Unnecessary scrolling on social media, unnecessary meetings, unnecessary, you know, conversations, unnecessary screen time. But when you balance it, I have 24 hours in a day. I need eight hours. I know I need eight hours. So I have 16 hours. I plan my days according to 16 hours, not eight, not 24 hours, because eight hours is for sleep. In 16 hours, I believe, I believe I can be a hundred percent or five hundred percent successful because I organize my time. So when you started off, you said, "Luke, you're one hour. We know how expensive it is. It's not me who's expensive. It's my time. Right. It's my time that's expensive because I value every second and minute of the day because I have only sixteen hours to do everything that I need to do. So it always comes down to planning and organizing. So do you plan your day in hour uh, hour units or half hour units? How do you do that? It depends because uh, I give a patient anywhere between 20 to 30 minutes. Right. So based on that, how many patients I have, I'll, it'll either be five hours or six hours or seven hours or eight hours. Then right. if I have very less time to spend with my daughter, I de decide on the quality because I can give her 15 minutes of quality time and she's happy or I can give her two hours and we can just mindlessly play and all of that stuff yeah. and she's not, not happy. So it really depends on the quality time that you give. So for me, it's everything is time. Time is not money. It is money, but it is also life. Because right. that is the one commodity that we're never going to get back. So right. who I give my time to is people may call me egoistic, but it is everything. Whoever's going to get my time, it's got to be, you know, gonna, it has to be useful and fruitful for me and for them. Right. So we talked a lot about sleep. We talked a lot about diet. Let's talk a little about exercise. You know, move more is your mantra. And I think it's really key. Uh, what is the kind of exercise that you advise uh, people, uh, largely speaking? I mean, we know that there'll be differences, but what is the basic exercise that everyone ought to do? Movement. I don't even call it exercise. I call it movement. Walking. Movement. Yeah. When I look at data of about 10,000 plus people over a couple of years, and we look at the most successful weight loss immunity, it right. comes down to walking being one of the best exercises. The next was walking coupled with yoga. Yeah. And of course, there's gyms, dancing, running. See, whatever suits you. Like I said, movement. If you are sedentary, it's a big problem. Right. So whether you dance, whether you walk up and down, you get 10,000 steps. As long as there's movement and your heart is able to beat, you know, at a higher pace than its normal pace, that is more than enough. But when I advise people on exercise, do something that you love that you can keep doing. Yeah. Don't get into some fancy program where you're right. motivated for a weekend and you stop doing it. Exactly. You know, that's, that's a big problem. And it happens a lot. You know, they just fall, uh, uh, they, they just get off the program, right? That's because they don't have a mind of their own. They're just imitating someone else or looking at someone's life and trying to copy them. When you have a mind of your own, your body will tell you, I enjoy a little bit of dance. So let me do dance on Monday. Let me do yoga right. on Tuesday. Let me do a one hour walk on Wednesday. Right. And you build it beautifully into a system that you enjoy doing. So there's consistency and discipline. And let's talk a lot about emotional detox, which I think is so important. You know, right. just 
Absolutely. And just exercising our minds in the right way. Uh, how do you do that? Because uh, as we saw in the case of Shashant, you can have a brilliant mind and yet you can fall prey to all sorts of, uh, you know, um, shadows and, you know, all sorts of anxieties. How right. do you do that? So emotional detox starts inside. See, yeah. all of us, we have a heart center. Right. Our heart, okay, when we really go back to our younger days, a lot of us follow our heart. Yeah. We don't really follow our mind. We do right. what we feel like, okay? Yeah. Honestly, we have to couple that with logic and, you know, everything else, yeah. analyzing. But our heart is our heart center. It controls every single emotion in our life. If we're not connected to our heart, that means we are connected outwards. Hmm. We should be connected inwards, but we're connected outwards. Right. Now, all of us in some way are connected outwards, but... If we're only connected outwards, we are controlled by everything that happens outside. So someone comes and says, hey, you're ugly. Or, yeah. you know, you've put on weight. You don't look good. Yeah. You're connected outwards. That person yeah. is what he said, he or she. The words are going to destroy you because yeah. you are not grounded inside. But if you're grounded inside, you'll feel hurt. You'll go through the emotions. We're human. But then you'll be like, who the hell is that person anyway? Yeah. This is me. I'm happy the way I am. Yeah. I'm happy. You reintrospect. You're connected. But if you're disconnected, then you are controlled by every emotion out there. That is why we tell people stay connected. You know, it doesn't have to be meditation, although meditation is a beautiful tool to connect within. It could also be being, you know, you live your life, you know yourself, you know yeah. what you really are, who you are. Right. You're not wearing mask after mask. Today in society, I'll wear this mask. Tomorrow in front of my girlfriend, I'll wear this mask. In front right. of my parents. You get so confused amongst the masks that you're wearing at some point that yeah. you don't even know who you are. Most yeah. people who feel empty at some point in their life, they feel empty because finally the outside stimulation can no longer stimulate you. And you have to look within, but within there's nothing because you've never been connected. Yeah. So you see emotional detoxes, it's a simple process. It means that we need to be aware of who we are, the negative and the positive. Like when I look down deep, I know I have I can't have an anger issue. I could be a very short-tempered person. I'm not ashamed of it, but I'm aware of an emotion that I need to work with. There's nothing wrong with that. I think the problem today with emotions are everyone's trying to be good. Everyone's trying to be this perfect image all the time. But no human being should ever forget that they're all born with the seven deadly sins. Yeah. There is lust, jealousy, anger, greed, slot, all of them in you. It's in you. So don't try to hide it. Sometimes you want to be naughty. Sometimes you want to think naughty thoughts. Give in to it, but you've got to tame it. You can't let that naughty thought become a lustful thought which becomes rape or something in, inappropriate. You right. can't let anger become rage and become murder. You have to be it, but you've got to also accept that we are built with these imperfections or perfections because a lot of people channel those imperfections into excellence. So I think, you know, the world, you've got to look beyond what the world is telling everyone. You know, everyone's trying to be this perfect, good person. You know, you can look at how, you know, the adult generation kills imagination in children today. They're yeah. trying to make them adults when they're five and six and seven, rob them of their imagination. All right. you're doing is creating a shallow replica of yourself. Yeah. You know, so my whole point is uh, emotions start from within and we need to be in control. If someone else has got that control of our emotions, okay, we are doomed. Then in flash seconds, we will make decisions because we can't cope with it. Right. We just cannot cope with it. Of course, there are cases where people have chemical imbalances of yeah. their serotonin yeah. and dopamine and, you know, schizophrenia and bipolar, which you need medical treatment. You need medication and you must take assistance. But I have to tell people up front today, okay, because I deal with a lot of patients who are going through depression, children, adults, everyone and stuff like that. If you are not willing to change your environment inside and outside, no one can help you. Absolutely. No one can help you. You got to step out of the dark into the light if you want brightness. You can't be in the dark and expect your light to get brighter. So the change starts from within. Take help. Take help. But I always tell people the virtual world is where you will find hypocrisy. And if you are attached to the virtual world, you are going to have a shallow, empty, sad and depressed life because that world is not real. The real world is what is around you, within you right around you, which you can touch, you can feel, you can see, you can engage with. But too many people have attached themselves to the virtual world. And that is why we have so much of mental disease today and emotional problems. What are the three mantras of staying stress-free and being mentally balanced, being mentally well? 
So number one, we have to understand that fear and anxiety and negative emotions are wasted emotions. They right. can't change anything in our life. They don't bring us anything. So feel it, but move quickly away from it into something that you can do. Action. Right. Use gratitude. Because when we practice gratitude, it is impossible for you to stay negative. Because when we stay negative, we spiral deeper into it. But when I, I can have five negative problems today, but I keep focusing on the things that are going well in my life. So I automatically shift from negative to positive. I focus on counting my blessings and gratitude. So that's number two. Gratitude, number one is, you know, if you give more attention to the negative, it's only going to grow. If you give more atten attention to the positive, it's going to grow. Where you put your focus and attention, right. it grows. The number third is your grounding have a grounding practice. It could be prayer for some people, spirituality for others, meditation, sitting in silence, but you have to have something that connects you with you. Very, very important. These are the every, two things. Every single day. And do it as a, as a habit. You brush your teeth every day, right? Yeah. Absolutely. We got to make it a habit. We got to do these things every single day. We can't decide to be grounded one day and then take a break <laughs> for five days and then come back to be grounded the next day. Luke, talk a little about your own journey to where you are now. Um, uh, I mean, did you make mistakes? Did you learn from your mistakes? Uh, how did you get to where you are? Uh, because you mm -hmm. obviously have worked on yourself to be able to work on others as well. So how did you crack it? So absolutely. Yeah. Like I said, I have zero regrets. Right. Except taking that picture of that amazing <laughs> body, which I've never ever seen in any gym across the world. Uh, yeah. I've made mistakes and I continue to make mistakes. Some mistakes I still make over and over again, over again. And life keeps throwing that to me, I guess, until I learn from that mistake. That's the like beauty what? of life. Like, what? like whatever it is, like sometimes like a well, simple example, you know, sometimes you get trolled on social media and I know I shouldn't respond, but sometimes that, that aggressive part comes in and I end up responding. And I know and, I shouldn't, Yeah, but you know, you it have happens. to really prevent yourself. You have to really, you know, uh, uh, grit your teeth and not respond. Absolutely. So I, be, I get, I guess the day I stop reacting to it is the day, you know, life will say, okay, Luke, you've learned that lesson. And I've not, I've not had a perfect life. I've had a great life. And I think all our mistakes make, make us who we are. And because I can relate to mistakes, I can relate to other people who have gone through what I have gone. Right. So, you know, if I've been bad in my relations, prior, you know, in my relationships, you know, I can understand someone who's going through the same thing because I've done that. I've either been the person to cause the pain or I've been the person to go through the pain. So I believe that everything that I've gone through, you know, whether I've told lies, whether I've been angry, whether I've, whatever it is I've done, I've done a lot of stuff, but I think I had to go through that journey in my life because today I can relate to other people who are going through it. They can relate to me because I relate. Our energies match. And then I'm able to bring about whatever recovery or whatever it is that I need to do with them because number one, we've connected. So I believe everything that I've gone through, I had to have gone through it to uh, be in the position I am today. So zero regrets. Absolutely. What is the story of your tattoos? How many do you have? Well, I don't know. I've not counted. Maybe 14 or 15. 14? So I mean, it was 14, 14 to 15, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Uh, why is that? Yeah. Why, why do you, why do you have those tattoos? Is it uh, to remember moments or to? Uh, no, you know? I'll be really honest. I mean, uh, the, the time my dad said you can have a tattoo is only when you know you're on your own two feet, you have your own job, and you're living out of a house. That's the only time you're independent and you can make an adult decision to get a tattoo. So the moment I moved out, I got a tattoo done. I guess it was more <laughs> of a rebellion thing, and I was into the whole DJ culture, the hippie culture. So I, I grew up with that phase and. I got tattoos done and you know, that's about it. You know, it's as simple as that. Yeah. You know, when you talk about people uh, being able to connect to people because you've been there at some point, what are the biggest problems you face, you uh, come across, especially among young people? You know, we're talking about say 18 to 25. That's a very delicate age, um, maybe 16 to 25, very delicate age. A lot of decisions uh, are taken by young people and, you know, sometimes they can just go terribly wrong. What are the things that you are finding? See, I think a lot of uh, youngsters are out there to prove themselves today because the world has made it look that everyone needs to make a mark at a particular age. Right. But honestly, I mean, I can't relate to that because till the age of 35, I had no idea what I wanted to do. 
I just flowed with life. I went from hotels to corporates, to call centers, to insurance. I just flowed with life. And I had to have gone through that journey to be who I am today. Right. And I really think that people need to take it easy because I know so many people who have worn themselves out by 22, trying to make a mark from themselves and stuff like that. But my whole point is you don't have to do all of that to be successful. You can, but not at the compromise of your health and your mental and emotional health. There are so many people who have started their careers late in life. You know, I'm an example as well. It worked for me. You don't have to do what I did, but it worked for me. You can use me as an example. At 35, I had clarity of vision that this is what my life calling is. And between 35 and now, I've had more growth than I would ever have in 10 to 15 years, even if I started at 20. Right. So, you know, everyone has a different life journey. And I think people need to take it easy and trust the process of life. It doesn't mean that you don't study. It doesn't mean that you don't do the things that you should. But I think we have to trust the process of life. It is always a guiding force that is guiding us. And if we're living with awareness and some amount of consciousness and we follow that guiding hand, it leads us to our life calling. But if we're following opinions of people and today someone's telling you to do this and tomorrow you realize that, oh, there's more money in being a hedge fund manager. Let me become a hedge fund manager. We're just responding to things which are not real. They can guide us, but everyone has a force that guides them to where they are. If I had to ask you the same question, like what's brought you your success and you really reflect on it, you realize that there is an energy that's always guided you and you're maybe, you may be conscious of it or unconscious of it. So I think people should trust the process of life and we should stop. The, the generation wants to please everyone. Right. Stop trying to please people. It, it gets you nothing. Yeah. You should be so fulfilled that you don't have to validate yourself and you don't have to win pleasing people right you know people are so dependent on who likes their post which party they got invited to which yeah. you know that defines them yeah don't ever let that define you i was always a rebel in that way i never let these things define me i didn't give a crap about parties dressing whatever it is because that doesn't define me what defines me is how i feel at the end of the day and if i have to dress up to make someone happy i don't want to be with that person it's <laughs> as simple as that so i want people to have a mind of their own to realize that real growth at the end of the day, you should feel fulfilled. At the same time, you may like parting, you might like going out to people, do it. But if at the end of the day, you feel empty and not fulfilled, that is your wrong path. If you feel fulfilled, go ahead. Maybe that's your path. You love socializing, you love parties, you like dressing up, but you should feel fulfilled at the end of the day. What about drug use, uh, uh, Luke? Are you seeing a lot more drug use than uh, uh, you know there was uh, when you were younger? See, drugs have always, always been there, right. okay? But today, it is way more than before. And forget yeah. about the teenagers. The same teenagers who are in it, you got to look at their parents' lives. A lot of their parents are also doing it. Today, it's become a very annoying kind of a thing, especially in cosmopolitan cities where young adults who are, you know, who are running companies, they have families, all of that stuff. They're taking to MDMA and acid and all of these things. You know, you finish that phase of your life, but you know, they're so unhappy themselves. They think they need a drug to complete them. It's starting from the top and it's leading down to teenagers. Teenagers know everything that the adults do. It's as simple as that. And of course, adults are using it because they're, Im unemo they're emotionally unstable. Right. So a drug makes you feel better. That's why you do it. And yeah. then teenagers, see teenagers want conformity. I mean, all of us, I experimented with almost every possible drug when I was a teenager. But my parents' upbringing was very, very clear. You know, experiment if you want, but never let it become your life, period. Right. That was drilled into our heads. Right. No regrets. But the people who are weak get addicted to it. The people who use drugs to define themselves. Yeah. So if I'm like the cool kid on you know, campus and everyone, suddenly I'm getting attention because yeah. people say, hey, Luke, you know, Luke's the guy. He'll give you the best drugs. He'll, you know, exactly. my inflate. Yeah. It, I, it becomes my identity. So I continue to do it. So a lot of teenagers today are defined by their usage of drugs and that's where their lives get destroyed. But drugs are real. They exist and it's only increasing day and day because people see, why do you need more drugs when you're not happy, yeah. when you're filling a void, when you're doing all of these things? Some people, of course, they use drugs. Like look at the hippies. They yeah. used it to have a great time at a party and that was it. Yeah. That was it. But today people have made it a daily thing. That means they are now being controlled by the substance. So do you often have to advise, uh, uh, you know, addicts as well? Do you deal with them? Absolutely, we do, but only to a certain level. If I feel that the addiction has grown too, 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 too strong, yeah. they need to take professional counseling. A lot of them have to go into rehab. So then we put them onto the experts and the right teams. Right. So, um, Luke, if I were to ask you, what are the three biggest problems that we're facing currently as a society? 
uh, what would you say they are? And, you know, I know you don't have the solutions to everything, but what would you say are the solutions? So the first problem in society today is unhappiness. Right. You may, we may think it's not possible because there are only happy pictures of people at parties and on yes. Facebook, but believe me, that is a depressingly fake world. The unhappiness, every second, you know, I mean, when I look at all my data, most people are first sick because they're unhappy, lonely, and they have no love and appreciation in their life. Right. That's the first problem we have. Second is the abuse of lifestyle. You know, right. the abuse of sleep. I can't tell you how many patients just start feeling better the moment they start correcting their sleep cycle. So yes, sleep. And three is the overconsumption of junk food, the overconsumption of restaurant food, the overconsumption of sugar. These are the three biggest problems we have right now. And what would you advise? Like I said, unhappiness can only be sorted by the person themselves. They got to start making the right decisions. They have to start facing their feelings head on. No one likes to face their own feelings and their own emptiness because everyone likes, like I said, wants to feel good all the time and they want to think that nothing's wrong with them. Two right. for sleep, pure discipline. Three, junk food, pure discipline again. So if you ask me, in a crux, the prescription is self-discipline and consistency. Right. Okay. You can achieve any goal in life if you are able to add self-discipline and you are able to add consistency. So for right. unhappy people, for 10 days, if they start to meditate, reevaluate their life, see which of their own society, parts of society make them feel whatever. And they do this exercise consistently. They'll feel better. They'll make it a lifestyle and they'll make it a habit. The same thing with junk food. Have it once in a way. Have it once a week, twice a week. But what about the other days? You've got to be disciplined to give your body what it needs. And when it comes to sleep, like I said, the most successful people, the most busy people, they can still watch TV and Netflix and they can still get a good night of sleep. It comes down to organizing and planning their time. And I love the way that you, do, you don't call it a cheat meal. You call it a treat. You I say call it a reward meal. A reward. reward. Yeah, That's... because cheat is a negative word. The moment yeah. we cheat, we feel guilty. Right? Yeah. Why do you need right. guilt? So we should reward ourselves. I will eat this chocolate cake because I deserve it. Right. I deserve it. And my body will handle it the right way. And I worked out and I've eaten well. So it's a reward. It's not cheat. It's not a cheat meal. I'm going to tell my son that because he keeps tell, uh, talking to me about cheat meals. And the other thing, uh, Luke, I wanted to ask you about intermittent fasting. You know, it's one of those things that you hear a lot about uh, uh, currently. It's, I think, one of those uh, keto diet kind of fads. But it's important, is it? So intermittent fasting is not a fad at all. It is a way of living. Way People of have made it into a fad. Yeah. Everyone's put themselves into a 16-8 and everyone's, oh, I'm a 16, 8, you know, and I yeah. ask them, why not 15? Why not 17? And they have no answer. <laughs> so, you know, people love that they make things fads because they yeah. feel important. That gives them some amount of attention. Fasting is needed for the human body and everyone's done it. Go yeah. back into the olden days. We finished dinner at sunset and yeah. we ate only after sunrise. So we anyway fasted for 12 to 13 hours. So 12 to 13 there's nothing hours. new. Yeah. It is therapeutic for the human body. It's just that people have made it a fad. To make it simple, people are having are fasting by having three to four cups of coffee. That's not yes. fasting. Don't do it. You're ruining your system. Right. You know, so people just make anything into a fad. But if you have your early dinners, you wake up, say your prayers, finish your morning rituals, you've already got a good 12 to 14 hours of fasting. That is more than enough for most people. Luke, do people ask you, what exact time should I have dinner? Tell me, should I have it at 6, 6.30, 7? What, what do you tell them? I just tell them to have it as early as possible and as close to sunset as possible. That's and then it. not eat uh, for 10 to 12 hours, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need to. When you start eating earlier dinners and your body gets into a cycle within three to four days, you will not feel like eating late meals anymore at all. So Luke, uh, your prescription for a good life in just one line, because ultimately we're all looking for a good life. It's honestly, just keep it simple. If you give me yeah. one line only, it's keep it simple. You know, you know, life is simple. At the end of the day, when you sit down and strip off everything, yeah, it comes down to simplicity. You know, you can have a billion dollars, a million dollars, but you know, whether you're on a yacht or you're just sitting on a beach on a beautiful island, it is the same experience. It's how you make out of it. You feel. It's how you feel at the end of the day. You know, I mean, it's all great. I do want to make a lot of money. I do want certain abundance in my life because I have certain dreams. Yeah. But I don't ever want to reach a point where it controls me and it defines what happiness is. You know, it's as simple as that. You know, it's, you can enjoy a sunset from the Maldives. You can enjoy a sunset from a beautiful beach in Goa. 
it's still the same sun. It's still the same sunset. You're still the same person, right? I would say just live life simply. Right. And Luke, what is your future? Uh, you know, what, what's the next thing that you want to do with uh, your work or your life? I think I'm doing everything that I am supposed to be doing right now. One is the, one is the, uh, food, uh, the food system in India, the food chain in India. Right. And I think my life so you're working is, with the farmers. Absolutely. Then my priority is my patients, everyone who comes to me, they're my priority. And of course, educating people through social media, which I do every single day. This is my life calling and I don't see I need to do everything different right now. It keeps me motivated. I'm passionate about it. I feel good at the end of the day. So there's nothing really, I'm living my dream right now. So there's nothing that I need to change. Except don't hit the Twitter button uh, when somebody trolls you. Stop, no, but I'll be honest writing. with you. I don't think I'm going to learn that lesson soon because you know what? <laughs> Sometimes you got to give it back and it just makes you feel happy. It just makes you feel happy. I mean, you get such stupid people and sometimes, you, you know, I feel bad if I'm not given back to them. I feel bad. So sometimes I'm going to defy those rules and give back, you know, because I'm not here to build an audience on social media. I'm here for the right audience. I think if I was an influencer, I would have followed the social media etiquette. Like, yeah. you know, don't do this, don't do that. But I'm very clear. I'm not here for numbers. I'm here for people to learn. So the wrong people don't have to be there. So once in a way, I like to give it back because, you know, you have that witty, that sarcastic yeah. answer and you want to just give it out, you know, it's like that. So I think I will do that a couple of times until <laughs> life, you know, really matures me not to do that anymore. So that's your sugar rush. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. For sure. Thank you so much, Luke, for being so honest and being so uh, wonderful and giving us so much uh, advice and I hope we can use it well as well. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Appreciate Thank your you. time. Thank All you. the best. Bye.